Hi, everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories. I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hi, everyone. I am so excited to be back. Today, we've got a lot in store, actually. First, I'll go through a new feature on the website, which I'm pretty excited about. And then we'll go through a joke and expression and some pronunciation exercises. In the second part of this episode, part two, we'll do the fun fact about the United States. Today, that'll be all about sharks and shark attacks in U.S. waters. Unlike other episodes, I've decided to separate the expression part from the fun fact. Reason being, I think it'll be easier for listeners to find the fun facts, so all of this cultural content that is in this podcast, easier. Before we get started with the expression, I'd like to give a huge shout out to two listeners, Rolf and Martine. About two months ago, I added a little button on my website that reads, buy me a coffee. I just thought, shoot, I'll add this in case anyone who really likes my content wants to send a small token of appreciation. And on two separate occasions, I received a little message in my inbox saying, I received a coffee, which is so cool. I just wanted to say thank you to Martine and to Ralph for sending those. You made my day. And I had coffee, actually. I had them. I went to a coffee shop, my favorite coffee shop with my daughters and my husband twice. And yeah, I thought about your support while I was there. If you're listening and you really like the content, there are different ways to support. Once again, that buy me a coffee button is really cool. And also, if you want to write a review on Apple Podcasts, I see those and I can't express how happy I get when I get a review on there. Uh, for the number of people listening, very few people actually take the time to write a review. So thanks to everyone who has made them. Let's move on to the first part of this audio, and there's no better way to begin these expression episodes than with a joke. Are you ready? How do you fix a broken boat? Do you know? Send it to the dock. <laughs> oh, that's so simple. Did you get it? There's wordplay with the term dock. DOC, D-O-C, is short for doctor, and we'll use this sometimes to talk very casually about a doctor or more so actually in greetings. So if I had a doctor friend, I might jokingly say, hey, what's up, doc? Or hey, doc. DOC, D-O-C-K, is similar to a pier. It's a sort of structure made of wood that shoots out from a shore, so a beach or a piece of land next to water, and it allows people to walk out onto the water, so on a floor, and also permits boats to be attached so they don't float away. Your boat is parked at the dock. So by sending this boat to the dock, perhaps we're sending it to someone to take care of it or repair it, the dock, D-O-C, or sending it to sit and relax at the dock, D-O-C-K. Let's hear that joke one more time. How do you fix a broken boat? Send it to the dock. <laughs> Yay, I love easy jokes. That's a good one. Let's move on to the expression to rock the boat. Just by the words, I bet you understand the meaning of this expression, but let's go through it step by step. To rock means to move from side to side. You can rock a baby to sleep, meaning you sway 
You're going to move your body from side to side slowly. Uh, You can also be inside of a boat that is rocking, right? The water makes it move from side to side or to and fro or back and forth. The, the is a definitive article. Here is the blue pen. There is only one of them. It's the blue one. Boat. A boat is a vessel or a vehicle that can float on water. Of course, there are boats that don't float, (laughs) but yeah, they probably don't move very well. So when the ocean moves, the boat might rock back and forth. This can cause seasickness, as we know, but also a human can rock the boat. I'm sure we've all been there where we're inside of a small boat and that one friend or family member thinks it's funny to rock it, to move back and forth, and everyone's worried that the boat is going to tip over and all the contents of the boat, so the backpacks and the cell phones and everything are going to fall into the water. In that moment, in English, someone would say, hey, don't rock the boat. To rock the boat has another meaning, a figurative one, and it means to cause trouble, to disturb the harmony of something. We usually warn people, don't rock the boat, meaning don't start a problem where there's not a problem, don't disrupt the harmony or the peaceful situation that is currently in existence. Don't rock the boat. According to Grammarist, the origin of the expression dates back to a speech that was made in 1914 by a prosecutor named William Jennings Bryan. He said, the man who rocks the boat ought to be stoned when he gets back to shore. What he meant by that was that someone who stirs up trouble or makes trouble should be punished. In this case, he was referring to a biology teacher named John Scopes, who intentionally incriminated himself of teaching evolution at a public school back when it was illegal to do so. Scopes and the American Civil Liberties Union, as a team, they wanted this debate, so this creationism versus evolution, to get national press. And it did. It's funny, though, because it's still a hot topic in the U.S. today, 100 years later. But we'll talk about that in a future episode. So Scopes rocked the boat. He made a big fuss. He caused a lot of commotion and turmoil where there was none. And many, of course, nowadays would say it was good of him to rock the boat. Sometimes you need to to see societal change. Others would say, no, don't rock the boat. Keep the peace. So let's go through some examples to see how we can use this in different contexts. Example number one, imagine that you're very pro-vaccination against COVID and your aunt and uncle are anti-vaxxers. In other words, they don't want to get the vaccine. They don't want vaccines in general. So you know that casual conversations about vaccination can turn into heated debates pretty fast. But you want to hear what they have to say. Before your family party, your mom approaches you and says, I know you want to talk to your aunt and uncle about this topic, but don't rock the boat. This is going to be a nice, happy party. In other words, don't stir up conversation that could lead to unhappy guests. Don't disturb the harmony of the party. Don't rock the boat. Example number two. Imagine you move to a new city and you decide to join the PTA at your child's school. PTA stands for the Parent Teachers Association, and it's a group that normally gets together to plan different events and activities for the children. In the past, you've done it and you've been very outspoken and you like things done a certain way. A friend tells you, don't rock the boat. Remember, this PTA has been established for a long time. They probably have a certain way they like to do things. Don't try and change it up. Don't stir up commotion. Don't make problems when there is already harmony. Don't rock the boat. 
Example number three. Imagine you're visiting a well-known restaurant with a friend who is a food snob. She has traveled the world to eat at good restaurants and likes to critique them for fun. At lunch, she decides to order her favorite dish from Provence, France, a bouillabaisse. But when it's served, she's distraught. In other words, she's very upset. The sauce is too salty, the ingredients are not right, and she wants to talk to the chef and let him know that his preparation of the meal was wrong. You tell her, oh God, please don't rock the boat. In other words, we're having a nice lunch. Don't stir up some annoying conversation or problem when there doesn't need to be one. Don't rock the boat. Hope that makes sense. You can see in all three of these examples, I used don't rock the boat. I could have said she decided to rock the boat in the last example, but I'm emphasizing this don't rock the boat because that is how it's most commonly used. All right, let's go ahead and do some pronunciation exercises. We'll use the statement, she didn't mean to rock the boat. Repeat after me, she. She didn't mean. She didn't mean to rock. She didn't mean to rock the boat. She didn't mean to rock the boat. And the conjugation, I rocked the boat. You rocked the boat. He rocked the boat. She rocked the boat. It rocked the boat. We rocked the boat. They rocked the boat. I like this last example because rocked when spoken on its own has a T ending, right? Rocked. I rocked the boat. If I read that slowly, you hear that T sound, right? That ED makes a T sound because the last consonant is a K. It is an unvoiced consonant, right? It's occurring just in the mouth. There's no vibration of the throat. And so it has that T ending, right? So when I read this slowly, you will hear that T. When I read it quickly, something interesting happens. They rocked the boat. Rock the boat. You can barely, barely hear that ED ending. You barely hear that T in there because it meshes in, it connects almost to the the that follows. It rocked the boat. They rocked the boat. I don't think it's necessary to get rid of that T sound in there all together, but I would definitely make it lighter. Don't emphasize it when a consonant follows, okay? All right, that's it for the first part of this episode. I hope you enjoyed. Go ahead and move on to the second part of this audio to learn a lot of very interesting information about sharks and shark attacks in U.S. waters. 